Speaking of blunders, we have Asmund Bronze. Asmund Cole, as some might say. Asmund has completely failed me. He comes out the gate swinging at the Palestinians, making an actual claim, shocking everybody with the testicular fortitude of his counter-narrative towards the pro-Palestinian forces that seem to completely dominate Twitch. And in mere days, after, moments after receiving his Twitch suspension, he is completely, totally, utterly buck-broken. This is one of the most groveling, spineless, pathetic... Uh, emasculated statements that I've ever seen, ever, and I mean that sincerely. I've been making fun of internet retard shit for over a decade, probably going on 12 years now, and this is one of the worst. And what makes it one of the worst is not that he's, like, on his hands and knees begging. It's how happy he is about it. So much of this statement, and it's 20 minutes long, and I... I I'm going to play like a second of it because I want to show you the, the issue with his with his thing. Let me get, find a specific part, though. You to hold me accountable. Hopefully this time I won't be stupid enough to ignore it. Mm. His mouth is cotton mouth dry. Every smack, every lip smack, every time he flicks his tongue, every time he opens his fucking mouth, you hear all of it. The way he desperately chugs water is just like, what the fuck? I am 100% certain that he is on Adderall. Because the only other person I've ever heard with such disgusting fucking mouth noises in their video was uh, Corey Barnhill, the pedophile. And he was like an Adderall junkie. Uh, from what I remember. And he had the same thing. He had that cotton mouth that was never satiated. The way he desperately, just like the way the water is like sloshing on him is just like, it's unlistenable. Literally unlistenable. Um, I listened to all of it just to get prepped for the stream. I will summarize it. He starts off the stream by thanking everybody for the ban. He says, thank you, Twitch. Thank you, everybody who reached out to me. Thank you so much. Uh, he said the ban was fully justified. He said that he really appreciates being banned because when he was planning to go live that day before he got banned, he was so nervous. He felt so under pressure. He didn't know what to do. And then when a moderator texted him and said, hey, buddy, sorry, you got banned. He's like, thank God. Thank God. It was like a weight was lifted off his shoulders. Thank God. I now have time to retrospect in process the, the magnitude of my blunder. And then he goes on. Uh, he says that after speaking to Hassan, he realized how stupid he had been. And you know what really stuck out to him? The number one thing that really convinced him was the the messages he got from you, his audience. He's got messages from people who had sent him messages on, on Twitter years ago. So like their last message was 2017. And he got a message just recently like, hey, bro, how are you doing? And then he even says this. Um, I think this is it. And uh, they uh, wanted to talk and have a conversation and see if I was okay. It's people that were Islamic and people that were had fucking family in Palestine. And I've... How humiliating is that? He was saying that people from Palestine, people who had family trapped in Palestine, reached out to him and were like, Hey, buddy, how you doing? How you doing, pal? And it's like the humanity from the Muslims and the Palestinians directed at him, not of anger, but of, of concern, made him realize what a fool he had been calling for the deaths of these innocent people who didn't do nothing ever. And he was so humbled by this. And in fact, someone reached out to him from Yemen, and he was so humbled by this. And now what he realized was that he had turned a blind eye to the rich culture and history of the Middle East, and now he made promises. Oh, can I get this? Let's see. Oh, here we go. I think that at, after all of this, I think towards the end of next year, I think I'd like to visit the Middle East and see it for myself. He's going to go there. He's going to go there and see the beauty 
of the Middle East and the beautiful rich cultures and people that live there so he can learn, he can truly learn how wonderful they are and how wrong, how terribly wrong he was. So he sits there and he explains this for a full fucking 20 minutes, just smile on his face. He even says that his father, his father said, hey, bro, you're being kind of an asshole recently. And he just kind of shrugged his father off. But now he realized his father knew something was up. The pressures of streaming and of trying to develop the businesses like OTK that I don't even know what the fuck that is. But he stepped down from it as a result of this. He realized he was pushing himself too far and he wasn't having fun and he was being kind of an asshole and his dad was right for calling him out and so were his fans and he begged his fans and said, fans, fans, if I'm ever acting like an asshole again, you just tell me, hey, Asmongold, you're acting like an asshole because I want to learn and I need you guys to keep me accountable is what he says. And then at the end, um, uh, there's one more thing towards the end. I remember the, the he was, oh, he was explaining, my the best part, the most obvious part to me of what really happened was that he explains that streaming is, um, is his life. It's all he does. He streams hours a day, every day, and he never does anything else. And there's tons of stuff that he wished he was doing instead of, um, instead of streaming all day. And he needs to take more care of himself. And he always, and I think that was telling because this realization comes after being banned. And I think what it was, was Twitch just pulling his chain. They yanked the chain and he fell to his knees. And he realized at that moment he was helpless. He relied on Twitch. He owed, his entire life was held in the hands of a company that owed him literally nothing. That they could crush him at any second. They don't with no recourse, no appeals, total finality, with absolutely no rights in his corner. He was a independent contractor that they could at will terminate association with and completely end his entire fucking life. And so when Twitch yanked his chain and brought him to his knees, he gazed up at the enormous face. Ten years it had taken him to learn what kind of smile had been hidden beneath the dark mustache. Oh, cruel, needless misunderstanding. Oh, stubborn, self-willed exile from the loving breast. Two gin-scented tears trickled down the sides of his nose. But it was all right. Everything was all right. The struggle was finished. He had won victory over himself. He loved current thing. Like pottery chat. Donald Trump predicted all of this. Q Anon said, when we go one, we go all. He was right all this time. <laughs> I did not write this in advance. That is the ending. Of, that's literally the ending of 19. It's literally 1984. It's the ending paragraph. He, um, in the, in the story, there's pictures of Big Brother everywhere. And he, um, he realized at the end, oh, he really does. He understands now how people could love him so much. A guy that may not even exist. Which made him realize, oh, he really does love them. He does love them. He loves them. He understands, oh, and it wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault for having to punish him. It was his fault for being out of line to begin with, for being the stray sheep in the herd. He had one victory over himself. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, cool. Hope to see him true out soon. Thank you for watching this clip. This is Perspicacity. Remember to like and subscribe.